Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Bless the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God for Minister Dara Allen coming and leading us in prayer. Amen. I felt that prayer. Amen. It is good to be able to go before the throne room of grace and to hear what doth say of the Lord to the glory of God. Amen. I want to uh, get into the word of God. We had a wonderful time uh, last week. Amen. But God has blessed us once again to, to just be in his presence and to be able to together come to worship God. I hope you have your Bibles with you. I want to go to the book of Romans chapter number eight. Uh, many of the verses that I share with you today would be somewhat of a familiar verse for many of us. I want to start in verse number 28. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. I have my amplified Bible, so it may read a little different from yours, but it is saying the same thing. Romans 8, 28 says, For we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Amen. We know that all things work together for the good. Amen, somebody. All things work together for the good to them who are called according to his purpose. And sometimes in life when we experience different things, we wonder how God's going to work this together. But God's got a plan. Look at somebody say, God's got a plan. Many years ago when I was working for a Fortune 500 company, I'd been there for many years. In fact, they had sent me to school and paid for my college. They had a tuition reimbursement program and I had got elevated to management and I was feeling good about myself. But they laid off one third of all the managers. I did not know how that would work together for my good. Not then, but now I can look back and say, look what God has bought me from. You see, brothers and sisters, that same company is no longer in business. But when I got laid off, I didn't know all of that. Now, God has me in a much better situation financially, better job, better employment, more skills, more experience. That God could take where I was and use that as a stepping stone. All things work together for the good. I got laid off from my company a few years ago, and folks were just trying to encourage me. Maybe God got something better. I didn't know what they were saying. They was trying to console me. I was upset because they had just asked for my badge. And yet, amen, God again was about to work things together for my good. When the Bible says that all things work together for the good, amen, to them who are called according to his purpose, it means what God says. All things are working together for the good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. There's a side of God that we don't understand, and this is God's foreknowledge, his ability to go beyond where we are and to see the future. All things work together for the good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And there's a side of God when we begin to pray and seek the hand of God and seek the face of God asking for God's wisdom and asking for God's direction but I come to tell you that God is setting you up setting you up for purpose and setting you up for the next level in your life sometimes we forget that God is still God and the Bible says he's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we can ask or think there's a power working in you that you don't know nothing about. You know, sometimes we can get kind of haughty. But God said, where were you when I made the world? Where were you when I set the water in this foundation and set the moon in this foundation, set the sun in this foundation? There's some things that are past our pay grade. That's even in the natural. 
some offices you can't go and sit in. Amen. I, I, you can go by them. They would have a board boardroom. Sometimes I'll, I'll slip in there and, and take a break. But when they show up, they were saying, get out. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be in here. I go in there in the boardroom. I go in there sitting down on my break. So you ain't supposed, this ain't the break room. I'm sitting in here. Yeah, this ain't the break room. Saying that I thought I could use the room. They come kick me out. Amen. But nonetheless, our purpose is to serve God with all of our heart. I got to back up. Our purpose is to serve God with all of our heart. To serve God with all our mind. All of our understanding. And it's in this place we begin to seek God. And seek God, where are you taking me? He said, and he gave us a word. All things work together for the good. To them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? Yes, I am. God said, I'm working it together. I'm working it together. So what happens in the, in the midst of life there's a side of God where God requires you to seek his face. When you don't understand what God is doing, you got to seek his face. Amen, somebody. I'm seeking the purpose of God, the will of God. Here's what the Bible says. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Sometimes we forget about that. Did you stop and pray? Sometimes we have our own agenda. We have not acknowledged God, but God will stop you long enough to say, you got to acknowledge me in all your ways. It is there when we acknowledge him, he begins to direct our path. And the God tells us what the enemy meant for evil, he can turn it around and make it good. We studied last week. Paul was on a boat, and he was a prisoner on the boat, and God gave him a word. He told him not to sail. They didn't listen to Paul. He listened to the captain of the ship, and they listened to those who were uh, more influential than Paul, but Paul had it right. He said, don't sail, and there's a storm called the Eurachodon that is about to come through there, and God had given Paul a warning. He said, tell them don't sail. They wouldn't listen to Paul. And Paul told them that the word that God has given him, listen, the boat ain't going to make it. But if you stay in the ship, abide in the ship, you're going to make it through. And the Bible says they made it through on broken pieces. I want to look at the captain. The captain was, was looking and said, we should have listened to that man over there. Paul, who had it right, and the Bible says they held on to, to lumber. They held on to the, to the broken pieces of the boat, and they made it to safety. But God's word was true concerning Paul. But in the beginning, Paul had to learn his lesson because he was wayward in his ways and that's some of us we're not following God's way sometimes we follow in our own way Paul was on his way to, to Damascus to persecute the church and the Bible says that God met him while he was on his horse and knocked him off his horse he said I saw a light and God spoke to Paul and said why are you persecuting me and Paul is talking to God and the Bible said that God blinded Paul for a space of time but God would heal Paul and put him in the ministry there were others of the circumcision who were saved who heard that Paul was saved and they didn't want to hear Paul because he was a persecutor of the church men of the circumcision are men of faith said now Paul has been converted he's a different man can I get a witness anybody that when you find the hand of God, he works all things together for your good. Amen. He can change your mind and change your life and put you on a firm foundation of right and truth. Paul began to write, said, God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit. And that's how you acknowledge God. That in the words of Christ, that he's looking for someone to worship him in both spirit and in truth. That our worship comes not with the flesh only and it's so important to be here at the house of God. To be present but God requires us to lift our voice and to lift our, our heart to him in worship with sincerity and in truth and when we worship him we become connected to God. 
And what I'm glad about is that he takes your name and he writes your name in the Lamb's book of life. Give you the promise of his coming. Do you know Christ is coming back for the church? And I'm mighty glad that he's coming back for a church. And then he said, I'm coming back for a church that's without spot and without wrinkle. And there's a problem because even our very clothes have to be ironed out. Can I get a witness? I grabbed my suit and laid it out, said, I see some wrinkles there. I got to iron it out. And, and there's something about our life got a lot of wrinkles, but God is the one that can, that can change the lifespan or change the life of humanity so that we have a mind to serve God. But when you say yes to God, that's just the beginning. When you said yes to God, he begins to alter your footsteps. And I heard the word of God says the steps of a good man are altered by the Lord. God can alter your footsteps. Can he change your steps? I know you said you was going over here and over there, but can God stop you long enough and say that's the wrong road? The Bible says there's a wide gate that leads to destruction. We got to check the, the GPS system, find out what direction are we headed. Are we in the wrong direction? I was headed to, so I thought, South Carolina. And I, I'm used to traveling a certain direction to get to Georgia. And so I'm just driving. Deborah said, you, you know where you're going? I said, yes, ma'am, I know where I'm going. Let me show you something. The GPS system said, make a U-turn. I'm like, I ain't paying no attention to that. I'm headed toward 10. And I forgot that that's the wrong direction to get to South Carolina. I'm thinking about that also, Georgia. We always go 10. Georgia go this way. I'm supposed to go this way, so I'm on 10. The GPS said, go the wrong. You're on the wrong direction. I'm supposed to be on 95. I'm on 10. I'm just driving. Sister Wright said, you know where you're going? I said, yeah. I know where I'm going. And she said, and I thought for a minute, said, you know what? I'm acting like I'm going to Valdosta, Georgia. I need to go through Savannah. So I took a direction, a U-turn, just like the system you know, these, you, you, these systems, they'll show you a road going this way and a road going this way. That means you need to turn around, make a U-turn. And that's what I kept seeing on the GPS system. I was headed the wrong direction. The Bible says there's a wide gate leading to destruction. There are so many folks think they're on the right road, but they're on the wrong road. And so we have to humble ourselves enough. I know that girl was sitting next to me saying you were going the wrong direction. But I started thinking, she's right. You know what? I am going the wrong direction. So after I listened to my help me, I got on the right road. Do you know the Holy Ghost is like your help me? You got to listen to him. Just like I ignored Deborah for about 10 minutes. That's about, it didn't take me long. Let me, let me tell you, I, I ignored her for about 10 minutes. I know where I'm going. Then I realized you don't know where you're going. Amen, somebody. Sometimes God will stop you. In your tracks, so you don't know why he's stopping. All things work together for the good. Let him stop you. Sometime, many years ago, I was coming back from Savannah, going down 95, and the traffic had stopped. And I'm wondering, what's going on? I wanted to, wanted to know why is the traffic, I mean, it's on 95, traffic just stopped. But what I didn't know, up ahead, someone had got in an accident, and they had lost their life. Here yeah, I'm worried about trying to get to my destination. Somebody's saying, this is as far as I can go. And God is saying, stop right here. That's when God says, all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that call according to his purpose. There's a time in your life where you got to let God be God. Because he knows the end of a thing. That's what the Bible says. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. Who's seen the house in the beginning and how do you see it now? Sometimes you see the house in the beginning. It is not finished. It is not complete. Oh, I was there when they built my house. I wanted to see what they were doing. And because I was paying my money, if I didn't like something, I would tell the contractors, this, this is not right. They figure I wasn't a boss. But I'm watching them. The bricks are laid like this, going up and down. I said, I, I don't want to see that every day. 
They said, they said, they said, just left, they left it just like that. So I told Carl A.F. Allen, said, look here. I want you to look at these bricks. These brick, brick men, uh, men are not doing what they're supposed to do. They ain't stand on that line. I watched them long enough to know that that line supposed to be straight. I ain't no contractor, but I know that brick line supposed to be straight. He made them cut it out and put it right back in there and fix it. Amen, somebody. Why? Because they had their own agenda. Sometimes we got our own agenda and God has to stop our agenda and tell us you're headed the wrong direction. Can you pause enough, as, as the, the psalm says, Selah, pause, to let God change your direction. When God changes your direction, he begins to alter your footsteps. Put your feet on the foundation. So wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. And there are many people are finding themselves on that wide gate Amen. But we got to get in at the straight gate. And that's what God told Paul. Paul, you get on straight street. Get on straight, on the straight and narrow. And then when we begin to walk with God, he gives us some weapons. He says the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Paul wrote this. He said those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Because the flesh is enmity against God and it cannot be subject to God because the flesh has its own agenda. And here's the problem. Though we're spiritual, we're still fleshly. We're still in a flesh suit. So the body, the spirit, has to be converted. Have you been converted? Now, if you've been converted, you know what I'm talking about. That old man, that old self wants to come back alive. And Paul said you have to Put him to death. You have to mortify him. In Romans 8, same chapter, verse number 1 says, There is therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as the personal Savior, Lord and Savior for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death when you come through Christ he sets you free you're no longer the same he delivered you from that same law of sin and death so when the blood of Jesus the blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago when it does its work in your life he sanctifies that which is unholy and he makes you clean the blood of Jesus does something so important. The blood of Jesus gives you the atonement for your sins. And that if you are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus because his blood paid the ultimate price, which is the sin of death, for your redemption. So Paul began to write, said, you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. Uh, there will be some folk who didn't come to Bible study, who would try to buy their way into heaven, but their goal ain't enough to get them into glory. The Bible says we bought nothing in this world and it's certain that we can take nothing out of this world. So what can you give God but your heart? What can you give God but your, your, your commitment to serve him? And there's a time in your life when the enemy wants to confuse the matter to think for a moment that you got a choice. This is not a restaurant. When we go to the restaurant, we're trying to decide today if I'm going to have chicken, steak, or shrimp. Sometimes I get two because I can't figure it out. So I got a doggy bag. I got chicken. I got shrimp. And I got steak. I got all three. And the waiter said, do you want me to just put it all together so you don't have all these sides? I said, yes, ma'am, that would be fine. Amen. But in God, we don't have a smorgasbord. It's God's way or the highway. Amen, somebody. Sometimes, sometimes we think we got a choice. And, and because we are made in the image of God, we do have a choice. But if the choice is death, Rather than life, do you really have a choice? God said, I set before you death and life. He said, choose life. 
Do you really have a choice? I set before you death and life. I set before you blessing and cursing. Do you have a choice? Which one you want? If you live long enough, you say, I pick God. Door number one, door number two. Which door is God? One, I pick one. Hello, somebody. Door number one, door number two. Which, what, which door is God? God's door number one. The devil's door number two. Which one you want? Well, let's just toss up. It ain't no toss up. I said, hey. <laughs> it ain't no toss up between God and the devil. Even the devil, we found out in Revelation that the devil is going to be bound a thousand years with chains. And the Bible says, Amen, that Christ will reign on the earth. Amen, there shall be a new heaven and a new earth and we'll be caught up to meet him in the air and the devil's going to be bound and chained. The devil's going to be subject to Christ. Amen, somebody. So when he saw Christ on the earth, he said, what you, do, what, 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 what you doing here, Jesus? Have you come to torment me before time? He said, ain't time. Jesus said, hold your peace. Do you know the devil, amen, has to wait his time? Amen, somebody. When the devil tried Jesus, he had to wait his time. So he takes Jesus and waits till Jesus get weak. Takes him on the mountain top, shows him all of the world. And he said, bow down before me and all this shall be yours. If he offered Jesus the world, what do you think he going to offer you? That's that door number one, door number two. I'll show you the world. I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. But do you have a choice? Because if he offer you the world, he's also offering you death. If he offers you what seems to be glorious, a fame, a fortune, he's also offering you death along with that. Some folk, they sell their soul to the devil. So they get rich. And then God cut, and then the devil cut their life short. So I ain't tell you that you ain't going to live long. Amen, somebody. But the blessings of the Lord, if I pick the right door, which is Christ, the blessing of the Lord make him rich and he add no sorrow to it. When I follow God, he's got blessings with my name on it, but he's not going to add no sorrow to it. Somebody say, I got to follow Jesus. He says to us, for the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, has made you free for the law of sin and death. The reason the devil can only go so far is because Christ has already made you free. Did you know you can be free and still walking around like you in bondage? Free, still walking around like you're in bondage. You got a car and you don't know where the key at. You still walking. Hello, somebody. And then somebody said, I told you the key <laughs> somebody, is on the dresser. Amen. See, sometimes you can lose your key. Amen, somebody. We couldn't find the key to our house. I said, Deborah, I gave you my key because you lost your key. Now we don't have no key to our house. So when Adriana came, we hijacked her key. Now, Adriana, you don't have a key. We don't have a key to our house. So we told Adriana, we made a copy. You can have your key back. Jesus said to his disciples, I give to you, wonderful people of God, the keys of the kingdom of God. He gives to you the keys of the kingdom of God. You've got the keys but you got to know what to do with the keys. Death and life was in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. He says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom is what allow you to tap into the resources of God when you need them. Do you have your keys? Do you have your keys? I used to have a lot of keys. These are not a lot of keys. But I used to have a lot of keys. Now I got a key to the church, key to my house. And I don't know what this key is. <laughs> that what this key is. I don't know what this key is. But I got three keys on, on my key, key chain, right? I got the ones that matter the most. 
I can get in the house of the Lord and I can get into my house and I can drive my car. When God gives you the keys, he gives you the keys that you need at the moment. Amen, somebody. You got to take those keys and turn the knob. God's not going to turn the knob for you. You got to turn the knob. Amen, somebody. Deborah had an office in the church and the door wasn't locked. And we was about to let somebody use the church. So Deborah said, I, said, I, I wish I could lock that door. I said, I, we put a new lock on there. And she the one got the key to it. Amen, somebody. If you want to get in there, you can't get in there without the keys. God said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of God. And when you pray, you can unlock the keys of heaven. Amen, somebody. You are, as Paul said in the same chapter, more than conquerors. So Paul says, I'm persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. He asked the question, shall tribulation separate me from the love of God? He asked this question because when he began to read all of these things, he said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Because you got keys of the kingdom. Come hell or high water, I got a key to pull me out of that situation. Can I get one witness? The God that I serve, he's working all things together for my good. If the door seemed to be closed, I still got another key. I got a key that would unlock that door. But we've been going to the door and the door has been locked and we've held our head down like God can't unlock the door. But the devil is a liar. He hasn't told you the truth. Somebody done told you wrong. That if God is God, you are able to do exceeding abundant. God is able to do exceeding abundant above all that you can ask or think. And I come to encourage you that it may look rough right now. But all things are working together for the good to them that love God and called according to his purpose. Because I got the key. Am I right about it? The Bible says even death and hell had a key. But Jesus went down in that pit of hell and took the keys of death and hell. So even if you die in Christ, he's able to shake your bones and bring them back to life. Ain't God good? If he can pull you out of the grave, he can pull you out of the hospital. I wish I had a witness. If he can pull you out of that, he can pull you out of the accident. I need to use that key. I need help, Holy Ghost. So in the midst of my storm, God knows how to provide you with the shelter for the storm. Sometimes he gives you an umbrella. That means the storm ain't so bad. I got an umbrella so I won't get wet. But sometimes they say it's time to hunker down. When you start hearing a lot of kaboom and bam and stuff start blowing around, you say, no, this umbrella ain't going to do it. Amen, somebody. I need a shelter. You say, what, what a basement. Well, we about to hunker down, amen, because there's a storm out there. But God is God enough even in your most difficult time. He said that you have become an heir with Christ. So every now and then, I don't know about you, but I, I check my bank account to see what I got in there. And when I check my bank account and there ain't no money in there, I start praying. Hello, somebody. I said, if you check it and it ain't right, you got to stop praying. Hey, ba 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 sha ka ba. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, Lord. Ah, ba sha ta. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, God, make a way out of no way. See, some of y'all don't pray like that because you got some money in there. Amen, somebody. But if you check the count and the money look funny. See, when I check the count and I'm looking at the bills coming through, amen, Sister Bright said, why you tell me you was a little low? <laughs> why you tell me you was a little low? I said, yeah, yeah, I need some help over here. I need some help. There's a time you got to call on God. God, I need some help. Somebody say, help, Lord. You over there struggling and straining. Somebody say, help, Lord. Help, 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 help. I need your help, Lord. I need your help through the storm. I need your help through the test. Amen. You can't depend on 911 all the time. Come on, somebody. I said you can't depend on 911 all the time. 
you got to know how to call on God for yourself. Come on, somebody. I said, you got to know how to call. When you fall out and nobody know you fell out. Hello, somebody. And you can't reach the phone. He said, hello. You better know how to call on Jesus. Are you going to meet him in the upper room? Hello, somebody. I said, you better know how to call him. Are you going to meet him in the upper room? Hello, so I said, you better know how to call him. Are you going to meet him in the upper room? Say, hello, Jesus. Well, I, I, <laughs> I ain't mean to meet you right now, Jesus. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. And sometimes when, when you call on God, he sends his angels. Amen, somebody. What you, what you don't want to see is the deaf angel. Amen, somebody. The deaf angel don't take no prisoners. Amen, somebody. You don't want to see the deaf angel. He said, oh, my God. Somebody said, oh, my God. What, why, you, why you come? Send the other. Send, send Gabriel, Michael, Gabriel. I was praying for Gabriel, not that angel. I was praying for Gabriel. 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 Hallelujah. If you know God, you'll call the right angel. Help me, Lord. Sometimes you can't get it out, but if you can lift it and say, Jesus. Jesus. And God will send somebody around your house at right, the right time to help you, help you up. Amen. This, this is when you fall and you can't get up. But you still know how to call on Jesus. In Father, in the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, I'm using that key of the emergency line of heaven because I need God to move. And if he moved for Daniel. See, Daniel couldn't call 911. It wasn't even open then. When he was in the lion den, he couldn't call 911. But he was there saying, God, I need you to watch over me tonight. Shut the mouth of the lion. Somebody praying for real. Shut the mouth of the lion. Ain't the Lord all right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would not bow down to the king. And they were thrown in a fire furnace. But they was praying all the way. You can't wait till you're in the fire to start praying. But when they got to the fire, there was a man in there like the fourth man. And somebody said, that looked like Jesus. He was like the son of man. They pulled him out of the fire. Not a, not a hair of their head was burned. And they didn't even smell like smoke. That's got to be gone. I could be barbecuing, amen, and I'm around the smoke. I ain't in the fire, but I smell like smoke. They was in the fire. The fire was hot, and they came out. They didn't even have the smell of smoke. Ain't the Lord all right? When God shows up in your life, oh, he is a way maker. He's working all things together. And the Bible says now, you become an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. And that is your inheritance. He says, and if we are his children, verse 17, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Sharing his spiritual blessings and inheritance. And so he said, now, if indeed we share in his suffering, uh, we shall also share in his glory. Can I talk to y'all in here? Some of the things you're going through, he's still working together all things according to your good. You're just sharing in his suffering. When they talk about you, they talk about him. When they call you out of your name, they call him out of his name. And if you suffer with him, then you will also reign with him. I'm going through some trouble right now, but uh, trouble won't last always. Can I finish in here? Sometimes we're crying, amen, but it's just a temporary tear. But when he shows up in your life, he's going to wipe away every tear from your eye. Can I get one witness? Your tears are temporary tears. So the Bible says we look not at the things that are seen. The things that are seen, they are temporary. We've been focusing on things that we cannot change. And I come to tell you, all things are working together for your good. And the Bible says don't look at the things that are seen for those things that are seen are temporary. But there's a God that have things that are eternal. Can I get a witness? So what the devil is not showing you, that that corn got two sides. It's got a head and it's got a tail. Some of y'all have been on the wrong side of the road. Amen. You haven't been experiencing the blessing like you ought to experience it. But I come to tell you, flip the corn. 
change the way you've been praying because he'll make you the head and not the tail. He said, you shall be above only and not beneath. I need to see a change in this place. Somebody says, change me, oh God. Won't he do it? For Paul said, for I consider from the standpoint of faith that the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. He said, I'm looking at all that I'm going through. And Paul said, I reckon that all that I'm going through is not even worthy to compare the two. Because one day when God shows up, he's going to show up with a crown of life that's promised to every believer. How much did you pay for that? Hallelujah. And he said, now listen, you didn't get it, amen, by your own money. God, Christ paid for it with his blood. And you got a crown of life. He says, now, there's a side of God that the creation was subject to frustration and futility. And he says it like this. He said, not willingly because of some intentional fault of his own part. Now, God, I was studying this. Amen. There's some things you go through. Amen. You really don't want to go through it. Amen. Uh, it, it's happening. And it's your show. But you don't want to be in the show. Amen, somebody. Uh, you know, back, back in the day, y'all don't, some of y'all know about this. But when you was getting in trouble, they take you to the Dean of Boys. There was a Dean of Boys by the name of Mr. Johnson. He was at Northwestern. He said, son, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. He had a big old paddle. He said, son, it's going to cost you. See, back then when they gave you a referral, the, the, they did swatch you three times. You're going back to class. Now they just kick him out of school. He said, son, it's going to cost you. Amen. It's going to cost you three swats. Amen. I said, I said, wait a minute. Uh, I know I'm late, but my mama just dropped me off. <laughs> my mama got me late. He said, it's still going to cost you three swats. You late? It's going to cost you three swats. Now, he's going to swap me three times, but then I'm going to go on to school. The next day, I said, mama, I can't be late. Mama, I can't be late. She was, she was driving, going to Blue Cross the Blue Shield. She was, at, she was on her own schedule. Amen, somebody. The penalty for being late with three swats. There's a penalty for being in outside of God's will that's worse than that. But whatever it was, Jesus took the three swats. Hello. The penalty was death. Jesus took the death. Who going to pay that bill? And when heaven saw Jesus pay the bill, he said, it is settled and it is finished. When Jesus said it is finished, it didn't mean that he didn't have any more work to do. It means the work that he had started was enough. Tell somebody it's enough. If you've ever gone to a buffet and you've been to the line three, four times, you know you can't eat no more. You're trying to figure out how you're going to take some chicken home. You've reached your limit. Can't eat nam, not a piece of chicken. Amen, somebody. Glory to God. You say, boy, I wish I could. I wish I could just load a sack of chicken in this bag and take it out. As far as the cookies, they, 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 can't, they can't stop the cookies. I'm taking some cookies with me. I'm taking some cookies with me. Amen, somebody. But in the end, Jesus gave you the buffet of life. I set before you life and death. He said, now choose life because that's where your blessing is. Amen. If you're in the wrong line of death, praise you got to get in the right line. The line that's in Christ Jesus. And here's what the Bible says. In the same way that the spirit comes to us, it helps our weaknesses, our infirmities. The spirit of God will help your weaknesses this is Romans 8, 26. The spirit can help you pray so that you can get an advantage over the enemy. Paul wrote it like this. He said, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Devil's devices because he's a, a cunning spirit. But in the same way, of verse 26, the spirit comes to us to help us in our weaknesses. We do not know what to pray as we, oft, oft, oft as we should. But the spirit himself, he intercedes for us on behalf of with sighs and groanings. He intercedes for us. Sometimes we don't know what to say, but the Spirit of God in you can pray for you. Somebody say, help me, Lord. 
Sometimes you don't know what to say, God. Sometimes you say, help, 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 help. Help, Lord, and God's grace is sufficient. Let me finish this message here. Brothers and sisters, believe me when I tell you all things are working together for the good. The Jesus already paid it all. You think it looks rough right now, but some kind of way God is about to do a shando. He's about to turn it around. Hallelujah. He's about to have a shift. You're about to have a shift. Some of y'all been praying for a shift. He's about to have a shift in your life. A shift. Somebody says shift, God. Shift, shift, shift. 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 You could be driving in the wrong gear. Yeah. My car got automatic, and then it also you can go to manual shift. When I first got a car, I played with it. It's, it's because now it's a pedal shift. It's like the, the race car. I can shift the pedal. Oh, look at that. I'm in the first gear. Look at that. They'll be second gear. Oh, my God. I'm in third gear. And then after I say, nobody got time for that. Because I'm in third gear. I'm supposed to be in fifth gear. The car just ramping up. I said, I ain't got time for that. Amen. I'm going to put it back on automatic. Amen, somebody. That was fun when it left. You, you, got, you, you tried yours out too, Daryl, did Amen. And you start off going, I'm going to go fast. One, two. Mm, mm, mm. So you can speed shift, right? But after a while, this thing going to go automatic. I said the Holy Ghost puts this thing on automatic. Amen, somebody. He's going to shift the gears for you. Amen, somebody. You ain't going to always be in first gear. Some of y'all, you stuck in first. You ain't going to always be in first gear. This is how, how life is. You're in, you're in first gear, praise, but God says it's time for you to move up to the next level. So you got to go through the trouble of the second level. You're going through that trouble, now you got to go through the trouble of the third level. Amen. But after a while, you get to drive, praise God, it's time to sell on. Time to hit the highway. Tell somebody, hit the highway. Now you're going to cruise. You don't cruise on the highway in grip number one. You got to go put it, put it in the fifth gear. Amen, somebody. Praise God. That thing go all over about seven gears. Praise God. Now we're cruising to the glory of God. Here's what happened. God said, I've got this thing on automatic. You just stay the course. Keep on doing what Paul said, pressing toward the mark. Pressing toward the prize of the high calling of God. Because that's when you walk into your breakthrough. Come on, stand everybody in this place. I'm walking in my breakthrough. There's a season of breakthrough. There's a season and a shifting of breakthrough. When you know, God knows, you know, hallelujah, that you paid the price. And when you paid the price, amen, God sees the price that you paid. He sees your suffering. He sees your tears. Amen, somebody. I said, he sees your tears. Amen, somebody. He sees your tears. Amen, somebody. Go ahead and turn the track up. He sees the tears. When he sees your tears, he don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Sometimes he just pats you on the shoulder. It's going to be all right. For I know whom I've trusted. I know whom I've believed in. Better is the end of a thing that's beginning. Come on, let's come around the altar. Let's pray. He sees your tears. And I'm telling you, you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. I got a hope in a hopeless situation. I got a hope in a hopeless situation. Come on, pray, sister, right? I got a hope. I got a hope. I got a hope. Yeah. I got a hope. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Forget all your troubles and all of your cares. Lay them at the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless you today, and we praise your holy name. We thank you that you've carried all of our burdens. You've carried all of our weaknesses, all of our infirmities. Oh, God, thank you for carrying them all the way to the cross. Hallelujah, so that we could be free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lay down the heavy load. Thank you. We won't take up that burden again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father, and we praise you. Those that are sick in their bodies, heal right now. 
that the healing virtue of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, fill this altar right now. Glory to God. Let your glory fall in this house. Let your anointing just overtake us right now. Thank you, Lord. We yield our hearts to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Come on, forget about yourself and just worship him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Open your heart wide to receive right now. I don't know about you, but I need him. I need him. I need him right now. I need his strength. Thank you. Hallelujah. I need his anointing and his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we confess all of our sins. Thank you. Everything that we've done wrong, we confess it to you, Lord, so that we can be free in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus, so that we can be forgiven. Thank you, God. We bless you, Father. We praise you now. Thank you for forgiving us, for loving us. Glory to God for caring for us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Build us up, God. Build us up in you where we're torn down. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us have been torn down in the spirit. So build us back up, oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Strengthen us now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you. Hallelujah. The troubles of this life have worn us out, God. But we need to be built back up in you. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. We praise you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, just worship him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.